Hello and welcome to another Minecraft video. I know it's been qu quite a while. It's actually been quite a while since I've done any video by my standards. Uh, I think it's been like, if not a month, very close to a month, maybe even a bit over a month. I'm sorry. Anyway, in this video, we are going to sort out block rotation in this Minecraft project. Now, uh, I just want to quickly point out before we get started, I have announced in a, a vlog post type thing that I will put in a card above that I'm changing the way this channel works going forward. I'm, going, I'm moving away from this kind of series where I do everything, every little detail, and moving towards a more generic approach. So basically, for the Minecraft series, I'm going to get as as much as I need to get done for this project to sort of call it a day on the, on the series. And then I'm still going to do videos that will contribute to this series, but they'll be standalone videos. So for example, it's Say Minecraft had a compass, like a, a quest compass, like what's in Skyrim and stuff. I've already done a video on a how to do a quest compass, so I would not be doing it in this series. I would point you to that video. And going forward, anything that I can do in its own standalone video, I'm going to do that rather than do it in this series. Because it's getting to the point where it's very hard to make a video because I've set this precedent where I cover every single little step. But the steps are getting bigger and bigger to like it gets to the point where I have to change quite a bit of the project to make something work and it like for some stuff it's it's half an hour of refactoring and stuff just to get to the point just to get to the topic of the video obviously that's no good so yeah uh, I'll I'll link to the in the description and in a card I'll link to the vlog post where I mention this but I just wanted to mention it here because I know not everybody watches the vlog post videos I mean by what day is just me talking then again so is this so anyway in this video we are going to make block rotation so basically when you have your block right now we put it down they all face the same way for most blocks grass blocks wood blocks plant blocks this doesn't matter because they look the same from every direction but some blocks furnaces for example stairs would be another one it does actually make a difference which way they are facing and we're going to sort that out so first things first if we're going to do block rotation, we need a block that looks different from different sides so that we can see the rotation is working. And since I need something to just show the different sides, I'm going to just edit the bricks block into a furnace block. And since that has a clear front and back and except, well, it's just got a clear front, the back sides are the same, but you can see one side is the same and that's good enough. So if we go into our world, I'm going to use the bricks block. We'll just rename that to furnace. Everything else is the same except for the textures and the textures are going to be 13, 12, 15, 15, uh, 13, and 13. Now, if we run that, we can see that if we highlight our bricks and we put that down, we have a furnace. But the problem here is that no matter which way I am facing, the furnace always faces the same way. And obviously in Minecraft, the, the way that you're facing determines which way the block faces when you put it down. So it's always looking at you as you put it down, the front of the block, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. The front of the block always faces you. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to make it so that when you put a block down, it actually faces you rather than just faces forward, quote, forwards every time. Now, thankfully, we actually did quite a big chunk of the work that we would have needed to do for this video in the, I think it was the last video, the non-cube blocks video. So we already have our voxel mesh data class, and that holds the unique vert coordinates and UV coordinates for each point on our cubes or, or not cubes if you started programming other blocks in there I think we've got a half slab in this project but you know what I mean so the good news is that we can just take our existing points and move them around because the UV points are tied to the actual point they will move with it which means the texture will move with it wherever we move as long as we move everything together the block will essentially rotate even though it's not really rotating we're just moving vertice points around so if we take the front face points and draw them on the top in the same order we automatically take the texture with us and since we're going to keep our face vertices in the same position relative to each other we don't need to do anything with our triangle code the bad news is, is it's not exactly easy to do this it's not complicated it's just faffy like much of this project and if you're wondering why we don't just shuffle the uv coordinates around and put them on top or whatever it's because that would work for standard blocks that's just a block with a texture but it won't work for uh, blocks that aren't block shaped half slabs for example i know you don't rotate half slabs upended but stairs would be a good example if you rotate stairs you need to rotate the actual mesh the way we're doing it will rotate rotate the whole mesh, not just the UV tech. And to that end, one of the key factors of ensuring that this works is to make sure that all the blocks always face the same way by default. So your front of your block always needs to be the same face on all of the blocks, because otherwise it will mess things up. So to start us off, let's go into our voxel data mesh class, which should be in scripts data, a voxel mesh data. 
And now we want to go down to our vert data. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. But right now we're accessing position directly. What we're going to do is we're going to create a function to access the position number so we can modify it in between. And we're going to call that a public vector three because that's what position is. And we're just going to call it get rotated position. And it's just going to take in one vector three that we're going to call angles. So I just want to say now before we get started, before we get really into this, I'm only going to be covering front, back, left, right rotation. So basically your X, Z rotation, which it covers most of the rotation that happens in Minecraft. Like you can't put a furnace down so that the front is facing upwards or downwards or anything like that. The reason I'm only covering that rotation and not rotation where you'd have the block facing upwards or downwards or like, like you would in, I think a wood block. I think you can place a wood block so that it's facing upwards or downwards or side to side or front to back. The reason I'm not doing that is because it's quite a bit of extra typing that is just going to be repeating what I've already done. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because it just pay attention to you need to understand what I'm doing in this video to be able to add those parts if you want to be able to place a block rotated facing upwards or downwards. So to get started, we need a vector three and we're just going to call this center or if you're not British Australian, you can spell it like that. And it's going to equal a new vector three and it's just going to be 0.5 f 0.5 f 0.5 f and all this is is a pivot point so it's the center of a cube basically because we are doing all of our vertices points like on a 1 f dimension so the cube is 0 to 1 in all dimensions if you've changed the size of your cube if you've made it 0 0.5 or 2 then you'll need to change this number as well technically speaking i should be like grabbing this information from uh, voxel data or something and dividing it by two but like i say I'm, I'm trying to get away from doing every minute detail of the project so we have a center point and what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our vertices around this center point in the direction dependent on which way we want the block to face so after that we need the said direction and the direction is just basically the direction from this center point to the current vertices that we are going to move so this vector 3 is going to be called direction and it's going to equal position so this is the position of the vertices up here minus center if you don't know that is how you find out that or a quick way of finding out the direction between two vertices you subtract one vertices uh, one sorry vertices one vector 3 from the other vector 3 and that gives you the di a direction vector between the two and then we want to say direction equals quaternion I hate quaternions I actually don't know anyone who likes quaternions we pass in the angles value that we're going to pass into this parameter and then we multiply that by direction and that rotates the direction so basically that's going to take the direction that we worked out here so if you imagine that as a line drawn from the center of the cube to let's say it's the top left hand corner of the cube and then this is going to so it's going to be like essentially a 45 degree angle and this is going to rotate it by whatever we tell it now because we're working with minecraft and its blocks we're only ever going to be telling it 90 degrees or multiples of 90 it's either it's like if it rotates rotates to one side it's going to be 90 degrees if it rotates all the way around it's going to be 180 if you rotate 360 degrees you're back to where you started it's only ever going to be multiples of 90 but this will modify that direction to the new angle and then to get the new position all we need to do is return direction plus center and that is the new position of the vertices and i'll just copy all my little notes in here there is a dog barking outside. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Oh, it sounds like the dog's got a friend. So I'll save that. But before we do anything with it, let's just run Minecraft and let's plonk a furnace down. And you can see that when I put it down facing the way that we're facing when we start the game, the furnace is facing away from us. So the front of the furnace, furnace is the same way as the front of the player when we first start. So I'm just showing you that now so you can see that it is actually working when we when we try this out. So now we want to go into our scripts and we want to find, uh, what do we want to find? Chunk. We want chunk. And then we want to go down to update mesh data, which is here. And in the line where we add our vertices, instead of adding the position here like we have been doing, we want to change this to get rotated position. And then we're going to pass in a new vector 3 and it's going to be 0, 180F. Zero. I think I missed a bracket there. So this axis here is the only one we're going to be concerned with in this video. This axis, the Y axis, rotates the block around. So basically the front of the furnace, as we saw it a second ago when I ran the game, will now be facing towards us when we place the block. If I change this to 90, it would be facing either to the right or the left, I'm not sure which. And 270, it would be facing to the other side, the right or the left. That's the only axis we're going to be bothered with. If you wanted to rotate it to face up or down, you would need to use one of these the x 
or the Z axis. Like I said, I'm not going to do that in this video just because it, it's a lot more typing and repeating what I'm already doing. And also I, I do want to leave some stuff for you to work out yourself. I don't like I don't I'm not making the project for you. Uh, so yeah, so make sure you following along. Feel free to ask questions in the comments if you're not. It's uh, it actually is a lot simpler than I first thought it would be though. So I don't think any of you'll have any trouble following it. So let's go back into Minecraft or into the project. It's not actually Minecraft. You can already see that there's a load of problems here, but don't worry about them for now. The main thing that we're bothered about is that if we place our brick furnace thing, it's now facing us. Now, the reason that everything else has gone skew if is because all of the blocks are rotated 90 degrees because we just put a blanket, ro oh, 180 degrees, sorry, because we just put a blanket, rotate the whole thing. And the reason that's caused a problem is if I just zoom into wherever the hell our player is, well, actually, I don't need to zoom into where the player is, if I just zoom into anywhere, you can see that all of these, it doesn't look a difference from the top because the top being rotated doesn't really look any different. But these side pieces, the side that's being drawn is now on this side because it's been rotated 180 degrees. So that's a problem we obviously need to fix. So one step at a time though, one of the first things I want to fix is the normals. The normals are now going to be wrong because the normals are tied. If I go to our voxel meshes data, pull up a standard block. You can see that we have a normal in here. Where is it? At the top there. And it's tied to the face. Now, if we rotate that block, the back face is now going to be facing whichever direction and that normal will no longer be correct. Fortunately, because we're dealing with Minecraft and because there's only four directions, I mean, well, six directions if you have up and down as well, but for this video, there's only four directions. We don't need to worry about this because even if it's something more complicated like a stairs, there's still only going to be one direction for each side. Because when you draw the stairs, the front faces of the stairs are all going to have the front normal and the top faces are all going to have the top normal even though they're in different levels, if you get what I mean. I don't know if that made any sense. The point being, all the normals are the same for a given face, regardless of what that block is. So we don't actually need to store this here. So what we'll do next is we'll pull up a chunk dot update mesh once more. Well, not once more, we're gonna be pulling it up quite a few times more. Where we had the normal, instead of pulling it from voxel properties, let's just get it from voxel dot face checks P. We already had that there in voxel data. I'll just pull voxel data up so we can remind ourselves what is in there. Totally not, because I've forgotten what I wrote there months and months ago. So yeah, we have this here, which is our face checks array. And if you look like the back array is minus one on the z-axis, front the front one is plus one, and then up is plus one on the y, and etc. It's that's all the normals. So because the blocks are always going to be using the same normals. There's no spherical blocks or anything like that. We don't need to worry about storing the normals for each block. So, and also because we've done that, we can delete that from the voxel mesh data. Uh, is it voxel mesh data? Yeah, voxel mesh data. We can delete that from there. So if we run that again, we should find that it's all, all the normals are still fine. So everything still looks like garbage, but the normals are fine. So next up, we want to go into our uh, what do we, mesh data, we're already there. And we're going to create a function in our face mesh data to call, to, basically to replace calling the vert data directly, or at least getting the position directly. Basically, we're going to intercept calls to, where is it, this array here. So instead of asking for vert data and giving an array index, we're going to call this function that we're about to create. And all this does is it just lets us intercept the, the call. And in case we want to modify it, we don't actually modify it in this video, but I think we're going to need to in the future. And in any case, it's good practice to go through a function rather than just directly access an array. We're going to pass in an index, just oh, int index. And all we're going to do in here is return vert data. So right now that's not going to do anything really. It's just going to return it, but it will come in handy later, I think. But we are going to use the function even though it doesn't do anything different. So if we go into our chunk and let's just delete all of them. Um, yeah, no, actually, let's not delete it because it'll save me some typing if I copy and paste. But basically we're going to create a vert data, it's going to equal vert data. Oh, sorry. It's going to be called vert data. It's going to equal voxel dot properties dot mesh data dot faces p and then we're just going to call this new function get vert data and then the value that we're going to pass in is the i value that we are looping through here that's this one up here so that gets us a vert data so we don't have to type all of this out every time we want to access something 
So the next one is vertices.add. You can see I said that about saving myself typing and then I go and type everything out. Vertices.add, vert data, and then it's all of this here. And if we, oh, Mr. Bracket again. If we switch this back to zero, we'll get rid of all those weird problems that we've got for now. It doesn't really matter for the minute because we're going to be changing that, but for now, it'll at least make everything look normal again when we run it. And then normals is exactly the same as it was. Cut that, move it up here. I'm just doing it this way so that I make sure I don't forget anything. Colors is also exactly the same as it was. UV coordinates. Now we want to say add, well, you know what? Actually, let's copy it and edit this line. Copy both of these because we're going to need both of these. And then instead of calling the voxel properties, all we're going to say is vert data .uv. So all of that just makes it a bit easier to access the vert data. It doesn't actually change anything we've done yet. So before we do anything else with that function, let's, oh, actually, we're not going to do anything else with that function. But before we do anything else, let's get directional placement sorted so that we can demonstrate how it works, or at least so that we can see it working. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to need to store orientation of the block. To do this, we're going to need to store another variable in our voxel state. If you've been saving your worlds, you might need to delete your save, or you pro well, you will need to delete your save if you've been saving your worlds, because this will make the old saves incompatible with the game, because we're, at it, we're changing the data structure of the voxels. So let's find our voxel state class. And in our voxel state class at the top here, we have this. We've put non-serialized here because none of this information needs to be saved to a file, but this does need to be saved to a file because if you have block orientation, you want that orientation to be consistent when you reload the file. So it is an int for now. I'm planning on doing a video on how to streamline this a little bit so it takes up less space. But again, that's something that will probably be its own standalone video. And we're just gonna call it orientation. It's just the orientation of the block. And then if we go down to our constructor, we're going to set orientation by default to one. So the orientation number is going to correspond to the face checks that we've been using for everything else. So everything's always in the same order, back, front, top, bottom, left, right. Everything always works in that order and we're going to stick with that. And the reason that we've set it to one by default is because in my infinite wisdom, I set one to front rather than zero. So zero is back, one is front. So at this stage, all the naturally placed blocks will be facing straight forward. So we can leave them set to one. We don't need to do anything with the blocks that have been generated when the world loads. We're only bothered about the blocks that the player puts down because until you get into fancy village building and stuff like that none of the naturally occurring blocks are going to be rotated so as we're doing only one axis of rotation here we only need to worry about four directions front back left right or north west south east what, however you want to call it and if you want to rotate your blocks face up for, or face down you're gonna to have to factor in these two indexes here but it doesn't matter for now all will become clear so let's open up our player script because that's going to be the first place we need to go and we're going to create some compass information and one thing that's important to remember at this point is that your player direction that he's facing is the opposite direction to the direction the block will be facing because if you think about it if your player is well, let's start using north east southwest because it's a it's a bit easier to visualize so say your player is facing north and you put a block down the front of that block will be facing south so we're getting the player's direction but then when we put the block down it's the opposite so the first thing we need is just somewhere up here doesn't really matter where public int orientation and then in update, just do it down here, we need to set that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say if vector3.angle, and then we'll just call it xz direction, because we're, we're just concerned with the x and z direction. We're not bothered which way he's facing on the y axis, which is looking up and down. And we are going to compare that angle to vector3.forward. And if that is less than or equal to 45, that means the orientation equals zero. So if it's less than 45, that means the player is facing the back actually need to declare this value first. And the, uh, the value we give it is transform.forward, but then we want to make sure that the Y value is set to zero because we don't want that interfering with the angle. So yeah, if the player is facing that way, or if, sorry, if the, basically remember we're snapping to an angle here. So the player might not necessarily be facing directly forward, but it's close enough to forward that we're snapping him to north, or would that be south, tally sure. So I'm just gonna copy this, save a bit of typing. Else if direction is less than 45 when compared to vector3.right, then orientation is going to equal 5. If you check our voxel state, 
uh, not voxel state, voxel data, you'll see that five is the right face. So that means that player is on the right. Uh, sorry, facing the right. It means he's on the left. And then this one, we're going to compare to back. So if that one's true, it's going to equal one. That means he's facing forwards. So that would be north, would it? Or south? I don't suppose it matters, to be honest, but it's all arbitrary. But anyway, as long as you get it consistent. <laughs> and then else, we've only got one direction left. Orientation equals four. So now... Since we have this information, we may as well add a little compass value to our debug screen that we've got going on. So to do that, we're going to need a reference to the player. But since we're going to need a reference to the player in a different part of the script later on, we may as well go ahead and make a public reference that everything in the world can get at if it needs. So first off, we're going to go into world. And somewhere in here, we have a transform for a player script for our player object is there. Just under here, we're going to add a player component. This is just laziness, really. You could do this in, in a neater way, but like, for example, you could replace all references to this as this and stick dot transform in the end. But for now, I'm just going to do this. And then in here, we'll set that by saying player equals, and then we'll get the transform player dot get component player. So that gets us, because we've got this singleton pattern and we can access world from anywhere in the game, we can now get at this public player component. So the next step is to open up our debug screen. And if we go down to here, we're just between, just before we add, our, you know, commit our debug text to the actual element, we're going to say string direction equals and just nothing for now. And then we're going to do a switch statement. And the switch statement is going to equal world dot player, uh, sorry, underscore player dot orientation. So that's getting the current orientation of the player. And then we're going to say case O, so if it is zero, so that means the player is facing, actually that's back, isn't it? That wants to be it south. I think that's south. I'm going to put south but I might be wrong. My head is just drawn a complete blank. So direction equals south. Again, the, the text label of this is arbitrary. As long as you've got everything consistent, you could call it whatever you want. As long as the numbers are consistent so that the blocks get put down in the right direction, it's fine. So I might look like an idiot right now for putting south when it should be north, but the game will still work, if you get what I mean. I always forget to break. And then the next one I'm going to put is five and that direction. So let me think about this. If it's five, it means the player is facing to the right where's voxel data yep five is the right face yeah five is the right face so if it's five it means the player is facing to the right if we're assuming that straightforward is north then to the right is the east and then one is the opposite of north uh, south so it's going to equal north and then default which is the last one left. Again, if you uh, obviously if you've got an up and down direction in here as well, then you don't want to default here. You want to default on the last one. And this direction equals west. And then below that, I want to say debug text e plus equals. And then we're going to new line. And then debug text plus equals direction facing because I'm talking like Yoda now and direction facing you are plus direction and now if we run that so if we press f3 to get our debug screen up you can see we've got a direction which is a bit hard to see because of the sky and everything and the, but you can see west south east north north east so yeah I've got something back to front here <laughs> west that should be shouldn't it yeah, that should be north, that should be east, and that should be west. But again, like I said, the, the labels are, are purely visual. It doesn't matter to the game which is north and which is east. As long as the numbers line up, then the block placement should work. So the next step is we need to be able to set the orientation of our blocks when we put them down. So first thing we need to do is go into chunk data, which I don't think I've opened. So it's in our data folder, chunk data, and in modify voxel, I think it, yeah, modify voxel, we want to take in an extra parameter here and we're just gonna call it int direction. And this directly corresponds with the direction value we've just used in the player script, in the debug script, we created in the player script. And then down here, I'll say voxel dot, orientation equals direction. I really shouldn't be using direction and orientation. Stick to one naming scheme. Now changing this should give us two errors. The first of which I'm going to change is in the chunk script. And that is here. 
And this one's easy enough because to change this one, all we're going to do is give it the world.instance. That's how we get to the world through the singleton pattern that we created a few videos ago. Underscore player dot orientation. So that's literally giving it the direction that the player is currently facing. So the second error is coming from world data, which have I got that one open? No, I have not. Uh, it's coming from world data and it is down here and it's this one here. And for this one, because this we're not using set voxel to place any blocks that the player has placed. This is all, I think at the minute, it's only being used by the apply modifications function in the world. So all the blocks that get put in here are being put down by the actual, you know what, let's, let's just do it this way. Let's take in the value here. So int direction and then pass that straight into there. And then that's going to create one more error for us to fix. And that error is in, I think, world data. No, not world data. We're already in world data. Is it in world? Yes, it's in world. And that's down here. So if you decide to get creative with your uh, automatic generation and stuff and have rotated blocks, you're going to have to work block orientation into the voxel mod system. For now, because I haven't got any of that, because all my blocks are just put down facing the way they face, I'm just going to put one to make sure they stay facing the way they face. So now when we put a block down in the game, it does actually have an orientation, although we haven't done anything to make the game draw that or orientation. So that's the next part. It's all well and good having orientation stored, but we need to actually display it. So this part's actually quite simple. If we go to chunk uh, down to update mesh data, wherever that is, that, and then just above this first loop that we do here, the first loop within the voxel or the face, we're going to create a new float, which we're going to call rot for rotation, not for rotten. We're going to create a new switch and it's going to be voxel.orientation. So we're getting the orientation of the current voxel that we're looking at. And then case O and this is where it is important. Like I said, it didn't matter. Other than me looking silly, it didn't matter that I got north and south wrong or eastern, whichever ones I got wrong. That wasn't important, but it is important that these numbers all tie in. So if we are on case zero, case zero means the player is facing backwards. Yeah, if we, uh, so if you remember when I first tested out the furnace at the, near the start of the video, we put the furnace down and the furnace was facing away from us when we were facing the direction we started. The direction we started would be facing north. So... If we put the block down and we are facing zero, which is the back, we need to rotate this 180 degrees so that it's facing us. And then five, we want rot to equal uh, 270. And then case one, which is the opposite of zero, we want rot to equal zero F, which, I mean, we wouldn't need to change that, but we will do just for the sake of making sure we don't miss anything. And then finally, the last case for me, oh, sorry, I forgot to put a break in there. The last case for me, uh, like I said, if you're going to rotate uh, up and down as well as side to side, then you're going to need the other two directions in here. But the last case for my project is this one, and that's just going to be rotated 90. And then that is it, except for the fact that I have left an equal sign out there. And then the next bit is just we go down here and we replace this with that value. So let's try that. So if we place one block, we can see it's facing us which in and of itself isn't that impressive. But if we go over to the side here, we can see that that one is also facing us. And if we go over here, that one is facing us and I'm out of furnaces. So I'm just going to grab some more. And then finally, just to make sure it's all working. There we go. And there we have it. Block rotation. So I'm just going to break in here. This is actually future me who recorded this video last night and was getting ready to edit the video. Uh, and I realized that I left a big chunk of, well, not a big chunk, but a important part of this video out. And I can demonstrate what that part is. If I just head over into some space here and I plunk down a furnace and then I plunk down another furnace and maybe a few more. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> right. I was starting to think that my bug wasn't working then for a second. So as you can see, it's not drawing this face here. And the reason for that, if I do here, we should see a similar thing happen. And the reason for this is because we are rotating the faces, but we're not doing anything to the neighbor check. So when it checks for, let's say for example, the back face, 
and we've got it butted up against something here. It's checking the neighbor at the back face where the, like the universal back, not the new back. As far as the block is concerned, the back is now at the opposite side. So it's, it's not that big a deal to fix. My solution is, is a, a little bit hacky, but well, no, that's it. It's a little bit hacky. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little, uh, oh sorry, I've just, just a quick note, I've moved this up out of this part here and up to here, it doesn't really make much difference, it's just that before it would have been doing all of this every face, we only really need to do it once per voxel. So our little solution is we are going to create a kind of interface, so right here we are grabbing our voxel neighbour for the current face and we're checking that neighbour, we're saying is this neighbour solid, do I need to draw this face or not? That's fine, but the problem is that this P here, this value is universal. So it's always straightforward, straight right, straight left, back, up, down, whatever it is, it's the universal up, down, left, right. It's not the blocks local up, down, left, right. And that's what we've changed. So we, we're gonna create a hacky little translator to turn this value into one that represents any new rotation values we might have. So like I say, hacky, but what can you do? So let's create the value. We'll just call it translated P. And it's going to equal, well, to start, we'll just say it to P. And then we'll say if voxel.orientation does not equal one, because we only need to do this if the block is rotated. If the block is facing straight forwards as, as is standard when all the blocks are generated in the world, we don't need to mess around with this value down here because it's going to be right. Assuming that it is rotated, we're just going to have a buttload of if statements. So the first, we'll start off if voxel dot orientation is equal to zero so if you remember one is the default so if we are zero go over to date here um voxel data so one is front zero is back so if our rotation is zero that means our block is facing 180 degrees around from where it would normally be by default so then what we're going to do is go through each of our potential face checks that we could have we're not bothered about up and down remember we're only bothered about left right front and back we're going to go through each of those four face checks and replace the value with the appropriate face check now i've already worked all this out on a bit of paper which was a bit of a mind bender at six o'clock this morning and if you can hear a lot of sighing and grumbling and licking in the background, it's because my dog's in here with me this morning. And he's decided to be very noisy now that I've started talking, which is nice. So the p-value is the face check. And we're just going to say if it equals not. So this is if it is facing backwards. Tra Actually, we don't need to put that on a new line. Translated p equals, and the value is 1 for this one. Else if p equals 1, then translated p is going to equal zero and that's this is pretty much all we're going to do for the next three faces <laughs> so uh yeah it's, it's not it's not elegant but it will work else if p is equal to four translated p is going to equal five and then once again if p is equal to five translated p is going to equal four and that's it for that rotation so if the block is facing 180 degrees if it's facing backwards rather than forwards then this block will modify the face check value for all of the four faces that we're concerned with like i said we're not bothered about the top or bottom faces because we're not rotating that way and then we want to do another one down here for the next rotation which is going to be voxel.orientation equals four which i believe is the left hand face and then i'm just going to copy this because it's easier And so it's the same 0, 1, 4, 5, because they're the values we're interested in, but now these ones change. Instead of 1, 0, 5, 4, it's going to be 5, 4, 0, and 1. And then once more, we will copy all of that. Only this time, we're checking for 5, which is right hand. And remember, we don't need to check forwards because that's default, so by default, everything will be okay anyway. And this value is 4, 5, 1, 0. And then the last thing to do is to replace this value here with translated P, and that should be it. So uh, actually, these are the wrong way around. That should be five, and that should be four. Sorry, I know, I know it. Like I said, it is hacky, but it was this hacky solution or another month wait for a video. I think that's it. Let's try that. So if I place, so that one's facing technically backwards, and we should be facing south, I think. Yep. Um, this one is facing forwards, and then we've got one facing, which way is that, west, and then one facing east, oh no, we're out of furnaces, 
and one facing east. And as you can see, it's now drawing all of the sides, unlike before. And if I just start plonking blocks down, all the faces still get drawn. It's checking the right side and everything. So, okay, that's that problem fixed. I will now hand the video back over to myself from last night to say goodnight. And that is that. So uh, I'm sorry that it took so long to get this video out. Hopefully the videos won't be quite as far apart going forward. But I, just to warn you, there are going to be less of these kinds of videos, the Minecraft videos, just because they take so long to make. For, for every 40 minute video that I make in the Minecraft series, there's about, oh, I don't know, seven hours worth of working things out. Seven hours that I have to try and line up all at once, otherwise my head just doesn't gel properly if I'm not working on it all in one go. And then however many five hours editing whatever so yeah there'll be more videos going forward but less of these videos i'm not abandoning the series yet i want to try and get it to a finishing point or not a finishing point but like a a, a neater end i don't want to leave the game completely half finished but i but i will say outright i am not building the full game so if if you were hoping i was going to take you all the way through to you know the current state of minecraft 1.17 or whatever the hell they're on at the minute that's not happening but yeah so thank you for waiting thank you for watching and as always i want to thank all my patreons uh, you're all amazing and as always the special thanks go out to the sugar daddy slash mama level patreons who currently are dave maldine Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, and Mr. Drunken Dragon. You guys are excellent. Special thanks to Gabriel White, who for absolutely no reason just decided to double his top tier Patreon. On that note, one of our Patreons, Andrew Burke, is working on a project at the minute, who I, I believe it's in Steam. I've got a link somewhere. Being the organized soul I am, I haven't got it in front of me, but he's got a project that I believe it's on Steam. I really hope it's on Steam now that I've said that. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description below, so check that out. And also, if you check the Discord, there's a lot of other people have projects it's just uh andrew being a long time patreon supporter who reached out to me i wanted to mention that in this video and for any of the other patreons i'm happy to shout you guys out if you've got a project you want to plug i mean within reason don't bombard me or anything but yeah that is it thank you for watching and we'll see you next time which will be a lot sooner than the last time to this time i swear bye bye <laughs>